Hello and welcome back. And uh, you're probably wondering what I'm doing on a footpath in a field if this is a restoration uh, <laughs> video. The thing is, I've got the dog to walk and I'm just kind of like planning out what I'm going to do in my head. And um, what better way to do that than having a quick little walk first hand just so that you can square things away, kind of formulate a plan, um, you know, and then so when you get back to the workshop, you're not stood there looking at it and thinking, what am I going to do? I can go straight into what I'm now thinking about now. And I always find if I'm out, you know, on a glorious day like today, just having a little walk, my mind is a little bit sharper and more focused. And, um, you know, we'll have a little recap on where we are and I'll let you know my thoughts, what we're going to do before we hit the workshop. So that's my view. There, there is a little bit of wind, but nevertheless, we've got to head to that top corner where those trees are and descend down over a hill, hit a lane and make my way back to my house and workshop. We've just stumbled across a unfortunate uh, casualty, a, a road accident. Um, there is a road here and um, I should think uh, this fox is unfortunately been hit by a vehicle the back legs look totally splayed open and i think it's just been put here over the hedge bracken wants to get to it uh i'm not letting him but uh, we're going to take a long walk around this and we'll head up there and have a little chat so to uh, recap the wood shaft was no good, it was full of woodworm and on top of that it was rotted out and it was snapped, it was damaged and the gentleman knows that there was no way you could treat it for the woodworm, salvage it, you know, renovate it, it was gone. So we've removed that and we found out that it was a deer antler with a metal a threaded bore into it, which is a standard practice, <coughs> but um, they do tend to fail over a long time long time if they've been heavily used but ultimately it's in place and the antler doesn't look like it will withstand too much messing around it is old after all and it's been uh, thoroughly used and abused this uh, stick but it is a treasured item that uh, antler on top i don't know what for what reason but it's really treasured so i've got i've got to put a shaft on but first we've got to have a look at the antler. Now, there is a countersunk um, circle in the antler and after speaking to him, there was a, uh, he believes, a coin there at some point in time. He said to me, don't bother, just, just put it on a shaft but, and, and be done with it. But I still want to make it look half tidy for the gentleman. You know, that's my kind of prerogative as a stick maker. I, I do I do actually want to give him something presentable. So I'll figure that out. But ultimately, our first steps are to clean up that threaded bar in that area. And then, once we've done that, ultimately clean up the antler, you know, put some colour back into it, and then stabilise it so it doesn't deteriorate anymore. So I'm going to make my way back to a workshop and we'll have a look at it. Well, I'm back home and I'm in the woodshed. It's a nice day, so I've come down here and I'm just enjoying a little bit of sun. There is a bit of a chill and it, it will drop off and I will go into the workshop then. But let's just remind ourselves what we have here. And as you can see, it's not looking too pretty. My first job is to clean this uh, metal rodded uh, well metal rod up it's threaded and for that i will be using two wire brushes i have a steel one which is slightly more aggressive and then i have a brass one and that's you know for more intricate work which i will be doing around the actual deer antler itself so basically i don't give myself any more work by damaging it so ultimately we've got to basically just do a bit of elbow grease and clean this one up and it is it is literally 
just basically grafting by just literally cleaning it off. I'm not looking at making it like brand new shiny metal, but I need to get all the scaly, horrible, you know, cruddy bits of metal that's rusted off it. So it gives the actual epoxy when we put seat it back into a shaft somewhere to purchase and hold on to it. I have come up with a uh, cunning plan to try and stop this yet again turning in the wood the way it did with the original setup and I'll show you that in a moment but for this uh, particular moment in time it's me a wire brush and I'm just scrubbing now you see here that it's reasonably not too bad it's quite square as in you know the surface is flush I do have a flat edge knife which is helping me and I'm just working my way around it I'm just lifting off very small particles which is of um, epoxy and a little bit of uh, the inner pith of the actual deer antler just to try and get it slightly cleaner and more flush. I'm not taking a lot off, I'm just scraping very small bits off as you can see there, only, a f only small little bits. I do not want to damage this antler at all and you can see where I'm trying to go with it. And it's already looking a lot cleaner there, as in what I'm working with. I don't have massive amounts of overspill. I've still got a little bit of work, but um, yet again, I will continue with this and I'll bring you back in in a moment. Now, while cleaning this up, you can possibly see there's like an overspill of varnish or something that's been added. It's a very... Um, shiny slippery surface so i presume it's kind of like a polyurethane and i'm just basically taking that off um there's nothing i can do to save that it's it's gone yellowy with age and it's looking pretty bad so i'm just peeling it off as you can see there and it, that that shouldn't be there it's not part of the antler you can see what i'm doing now i'm just taking that off very slightly Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing it very slow and I'm doing an investigation really. Every, like you say, <laughs> this this really is beyond really helping. But, you know, I think that if we persevere, we can actually make something of this. You know, and uh, yeah, you can see it's starting to clean up there. But... It's overspilt down here as well. So I'm going to have to clean this up as well. And that's just flaking off as I touch it there. As you see there. Like I said, I'm not digging or gouging. I'm just very gently rubbing the blade. And that's all come off there. I've taken off all the yellowing as you can see all the way around and it's exposed it as, as slightly more whiter material. I've actually got some very very fine grade wire wool. Now this grade here is grade zero. You can go you know upwards of you know one two three four five six seven eight grade which obviously gets coarser or you can go like zero which I have here double zero triple zero and so on to get uh, less aggressive and I'm just going to polish this and I'm just going to do it so I can actually see what I've got here now that stuff I was pulling off is either the residue of somebody putting tape around it or it's had like a kind of um, petrochemical varnish put over it. But in any case, I've got most of it off. And it's just a case of polishing up here. The actual um, antler, I'm just giving that a slight polish with this. Like I said, this is very, very fine. It's, it's not really aggressive at all. It's more of a polishing agent. And what I'm doing is I'm polishing off all the loose calcium and deposits actually on the antler the antler itself is it hasn't rotted or degraded to the point it's falling apart but you're getting surface uh, degradation with age and it being exposed to moisture and the elements in air so all i'm doing is just polishing that off 
already it's starting to have a better better look to the, to the actual antler but you don't want to go too you can't polish it fully back because you would start to remove material all i'm trying to do is just get it so it kind of looks workable there's a few stains here that it's acquired over the years it's actually coming up not too bad at the moment obviously being wire wool you can leave like a very fine silver um, discoloration so you've got to bear that in mind and you'll have to use a very um, you know gentle cloth motion in a circular motion to remove any uh, stains that this might leave so i'm going to continue doing this and we'll see what we got then so here we are at the moment i've kind of squared off the actual joint and that you can see i'm polishing you can see the actual embossed area where the coin sat but if you look very carefully particularly around that area here you kind of see what the original color of the antler was and there are various other areas like this bit here on my thumb is that's an original color and you can see it's almost like a dark coffee color which would have run all the way up through the antler this gray mottled area is actually where that coloration is pretty much faded and been damaged by uv light and on top of the that you know moisture so it's still a little way off yet still got a bit more polishing but already we can see we're starting to pull back you know something that's beginning to look like uh, a red deer antler and that's what i presume this species is but as for this joint you can just see the very soft aerated pith and you can see how they sunk the rod in they've drilled it out filled it with epoxy and pushed it in it is there firmly it doesn't look like it's been done in the best of um you know ways i would have taken out slightly more pith to make it stronger but um there you go but it's strong enough what we want we can't really afford to be drilling it out this doesn't look like it's strong enough to withstand any drilling. So I'm going to carry on polishing and um, we'll have a look uh, once I've done that. Right, at this stage here, I'm going to cut some grooves randomly all over this uh, bar, not too far into it. And because these threaded bits here fail to hold the actual epoxy, I'm going to put deep grooves into this bar, like I said, ram randomly, and that should give it better purchase against the wood wall of the actual shaft. And on top of that, the epoxy will stop this turning inside the uh, wood shaft and moving backwards and forwards. So I've got a grinder with a metal disc as per usual you know anything like this full safety rules apply but um yeah i'm gonna crack on with this let's get to it Now I'm not too worried about uh, cleaning this up because ultimately, you know, if it's rough, it's going to have a better chance of, um, you know, bedding into the shaft. So I'm not too worried about sanding this down. Um, in, in, in reality, I think the more jagged edges I do have on it, um, it will actually help hold it actually in the shaft or would... Um, the wood part of the stick so yeah i'm pretty happy with that and um i've got to got to do this actual um where the coin was medallion 
that can't be done yet we've got to color the actual deer antler we've got to put a bit of life back into this antler so that's our next uh, project right then we've got this pretty much prepared for us to now put some color back into this de uh, deer antler now you're probably wondering how we're going to do that and obviously i'm going to show you in a moment but that's an off cut from a red deer antler and you can see it's got like a, a dark chocolate coffee coffee color to it and it's kind of like a pebble dashed with different other specks of darker bits of color now you can see this one if i put it against it or put it just over you can see that sun bleached a fair bit more than this one here so we're aiming to get this color transported onto this sampler and it will really bring it back to life um, like i said we can't do that internal where the coin was or do anything about it till we get this halfway prepped at least with the color because we do not want any of the color leaking into whatever we do in that inner core bit there and i still haven't decided what i'm going to do about that we've relocated back into a workshop because quite simply the wind is getting up and it's getting a bit chill i've got a decorator sponge here just a cheap one it was only like one pound fifty and i'm just going to take a triangle corner off it quite simply with a pair of scissors and actually without cutting my hands you know <laughs> And just take a little corner off and this will be what we apply our product to the deer antler so as you can see that was quite simple and it does leave you a fair bit if you need to wash your car afterwards so i've just got a very very light covering of a wood stain which i've put in a container there and all i'm doing is lightly brushing it on now that wood stain is um, just something that I've had kicking around for years I can't even remember what actual brand it is but if you put it on very lightly and just smooth it over you can see it's starting to bring the color back up into that deer antler and it's blatantly obvious you can see the weather and sun damage to that now because i have a match from this deer antler here i can see as you can see i what i will have to do is just lightly wire um use that steel wool and just once this is dried in take it back down to take that heaviness of some of that color off but to, to match this but at the moment all i'm concerned about is just giving it a nice nice very light coat and i don't need to apply lots and to be honest with you it's looking really nice already And you don't have to be worry too much about lines and marks because once it's dry like i said you will use that very fine uh, steel wool and just polish around and take out bits that look too heavy or some that looks a little bit light you might have to add a little bit more let it dry and come back to but yeah it's all about now just trying to get something that looks that you're happy with it looks authentic so i'm going to continue applying this like i said i'm doing it very very lightly and i'm very very happy with how this is coming out it's, it's filling out all the the bits that need filling out I just need to get a little bit more product in the actual container so i've kind of worked that all in now and i took that horrible gray mottled uh, color off it and it's got that uh, 
vibe of being um, like a, a red deer antler. I've managed to blend in colours and I've taken it so I've matched in that white bit that had all that yellow um, product on it. So it's looking really nice. Obviously you can see um, the stain has picked up all the scratches in this antler but this is an old used antler. There's nothing we can do about that. What we're doing is just putting colour back on that antler to make it look like it's you know fresh. It's not something which it was something that's just been lying around a farmyard and basically been used as a tool. Um, this now I'm going to let dry and I'm going to come back to it. We'll inspect it, see if we're happy. Polish it off with a little bit of wire wool, the areas that we may want to take a little bit of darkness off. And uh, see if I need to apply another coat. If I don't, um, we'll move on to the next stage of treating this antler. Well, some time has passed and I have a dry antler in my hand. Um, it did get some assistance with the uh, you know, log burner that did speed up the drying. But it is dried pretty much almost the colour I want it everywhere else. Um, you know, it even the bits I did initially think were too dark. That looks almost like... Uh, you know, I would be expecting a deer antler from, um, you know, a supplier. I'd be buying online to make one of my new new hiking sticks. But there is a few areas I just want to polish out. And I'll very quickly show you. Right, I've got some steel wool. And as you can see, it's a zero grade. Like I said, you can go down to double zero, triple zero, if I'm correct. I think I'm correct in saying that. I'm just taking a small bit of this out and it tends to come out in clumps like that. I don't need that much of it. Now, what I'm going to ha uh, look at, I want to make it look as natural as I can. Now, even though this would naturally be dark on, on one, on a deer antler, red deer one, there's just a few areas I think I'm just going to polish out. So it's just basically being very, very, um, you know, light with your touch. And I'm just polishing like that, just, just bring it around. I'm not looking to take material, it's just to, just to reduce some of that darker colour. And instantly I can see it's taken that back from being a dark chocolate colour to just being, well, darker than the surrounding colour, which is natural anyway. Some areas would be darker. So I'm just polishing. Like I said, I don't want to take nothing off the tines because I'm happy with them. And all I'm doing is a very light polish. If you needed to reapply and then repolish, you can. Um, obviously, to get stronger colours, just keep applying uh, your wood stain product till ultimately you, you, you get the desired effect you're looking for. And obviously you can then polish out to help you achieve that effect. It's quite simple. It, 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 it can be painstaking if you have to reapply. Well, I wait for it to dry, polish it out, then you're not happy. You know, it can be time consuming and painstaking, but ultimately, you know, it is... A, whatever effect you're looking to get i'm just quite happy that this one was so so degraded in the color and appearance that um you know i was able to achieve what i'm after with just putting on quite a quite a heavy coat really i possibly on a newer antler i wouldn't have possibly put quite so much of that on now this is looking really nice now i've i've taken I've taken that off to where I'm happy because naturally in 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 the antler it's always darker on that uh, on the on the clevical parts of the actual antler. So I I didn't really need to do a lot here. I'm quite happy with that. You like I said yourself will probably have to do a little bit more polishing to achieve it. But yeah, I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to move on to the next stage. So as you can see, you know, I've 
obviously polished it like I said and I've just blanked off with a bit of masking tape in there because I don't want any product going in there because I want to keep that as um, clean and tidy as I can to allow any adhesive to stick in there what I'm going to do though is I have a you know there are other brands but a polyurethane spray basically and what that's going to do if I give it a couple light coats that will seal it and by sealing it you're helping protect it from the weather the elements because ultimately um, what what degrades an antler is moisture and you know exposure to sun and air all those elements help break down an, an antler and start it to rot um, so I'm going to give it a coat of this and this will basically seal it in its entirety and it won't have um, the ability to get moisture on it which will cause it to rot and this does have a, a UV protection as well so you know or a degree of uv protection and it will kind of um you know protect it and obviously seal it and it should last for many 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 years to come so oh, let's well basically let's just get to it because it's getting dark and i've got a dog to walk so yeah and also i've been told i've got tea when i get back if you are going to use uh, spray paint, which I strongly recommend over trying to brush anything on because it usually goes on too thick and not only does it go on too thick, you can never get that absolute smooth uh, sheen to it which you would get with a deer antler. So I do recommend wholly and solely you use a spray product. Um, but it's cold and it's cold in here um, if the temperature of the actual product that you're using and the air temperature is uh, um, too cold what you can find is you'll get like a pearl effect that will come on the actual varnish um, I know it's going to be cold tonight so I'm going to spray this in here and then I will eventually take it indoors and I'll hang it up out the way of the kids and the pets and everything just to let it fully harden off. And if I need to do it again, I'll spray it in the morning for its second coat. But I think I'm going to give it one coat to seal it. And because I'm going to be um, dealing with that um, medallion uh, emboss and I, I've got a feeling I'll probably... Um, milliput it out and sand it back i will probably save the second coat to when i've completed that so but you know for now i'm going to give it a coat uh masks as normal because obviously um you don't want to be breathing in you know the vapor from all these paints right i'll try and catch this on camera I'm just giving it a very light that's coming up really nice now I'm really liking that You don't want to get too close to it when you're spraying. It's just really dusting it off. And I think we're done there. There. So I've brought it back in the workshop so you can see the contrast against the orange of the surfboard and you can see how that antler's come up now and it is looking absolutely gorgeous. Just the right amount of colouring and that is that is looking stunning. When you think about what we were dealing with. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, installment of how to you know, renovate a hiking stick. 
um, you can see how we've uh, renovated this deer antler and the work that we've put in to get this far. Um, we still have a little bit of work on that uh, embossed medallion. Ironically, 99% uh, of hiking sticks probably wouldn't have that situation. We're just unfortunate that we're dealing with it. But uh, we still have to come back and do that. And uh, we'll be moving on pretty much in the next instalment on to actually getting a piece of wood, uh, a shaft, and straightening it and marrying it up, cutting out our angle, because obviously this one's been cut at an angle, getting it drilled out and getting it prepped for the actual antler to um, be seated onto it. So that's the next instalment. But um, yeah, this has been a, a thoroughly, thoroughly productive uh, session as to getting this antler ready. And I hope that you can see that you know this may apply to you if you're doing a hiking stick or renovation but um ultimately it's still nice to know how you can just bring an antler back up if you need to anyway um i've got to get this dog walked this is andy from uh, uh hidden valley footpaths and i hope to catch you again and uh, stay safe